If you knew dreaming could help you find answers to life's questions, how much more would you sleep? Stay awake, though, for the next half hour to find out. Hi everyone, I'm your host Wendy Pett. Welcome to Visibly Fit. Our sleep patterns and dreams can have much more to do with our waking hours than we might even imagine. According to one study that was reported by the National Sleep Foundation, dreams are a way that we store memories and we solve problems and deal with emotions that are essential for good emotional health. Others believe that God gives you dreams to help you make life decisions. Since we spend a third of our lives sleeping, I thought it was worth it to find out how to make our sleep work for us. Barbie Breathitt of Breath of Spirit Ministries has spent years learning how to interpret dreams and is now passionate about training others to do the same. So Barbie, welcome. I am so excited you're here. I am fascinated by what you do. Thank you, Wendy. I've been looking forward to our interview on dreams because I think they're essential for people to begin to learn this language because you're right. Why would God not speak to us a third of our life? He's so wanting to communicate to his people and through dreams he gives us to what I call letters of love. So every night we get a love letter, but we need to learn his language in order to interpret that love letter. So sleep is essential in our lives so that we're alert the next day and our day begins at night. So he plans out our day during the night season while we're sleeping so that we'll know what's going to be taking place that day, the next week, years down in the future. A lot of times he'll give us dreams and he'll seal them in us. And then as we seek him out for the answers of those dreams, we'll mm. discover what our destiny holds for us. He already has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. Yes, he does. And uh, too often we think that we have our own plan, but he's got the bigger, better plan. And we just need to let step aside and let him have that plan and, and walk it out. But I love that you say love letters. That is so intimate. And that's the way our relationship with, with God should be is, is very intimate. And um, that's what a love letter is, and that's what he's putting on, on our hearts and in our mind. And while we dream, I think that's a beautiful thing that he talks to us even while we're asleep. And, and to really absorb that and grasp that, I think that's huge. Well, you don't let just anyone into your bedroom. Right. And right. so God, the lover of your soul, comes. Mm -hmm at night and it says that he holds us in his arms of embrace and he's able to create in us the potential that he's placed within us he's given everybody gifts mm -hmm. talents abilities but a lot of times those are sealed in us and we don't really see ourselves the way that God sees us mm -hmm. and so I wrote the book dream encounters that I've got here with us because I want people to know who they are according to God's perspective yes, a amen. lot of times people say I don't want to know what my dreams mean and I because they're afraid to f discover, but when God reveals who you are in your dreams, it's your highest potential, it's your best, because He comes to us with a perfect love that casts out all fear. Right. So understanding dreams from His perspective, our seeing our lives, our potential mm -hmm. from His perspective, is it's refreshing. It enables us to rest in His peace, rest in His arms, yes. knowing that He's putting everything together. He's giving us a visual picture in the night season of what we're going to walk out in our lives. But he's speaking to us in a symbolic language. Yes, and I love that because um, I think a lot of us are visual people. And so when we dream and it's visual, and whether or not it's black and white and in full color, I'd love to get to that later with you and what does that mean. But, um, but he does, he captures how we best learn and that's through visualizing and seeing it and seeing pictures. It's like, you know, uh, when you go to the, the caves and you see how, how man would, would, didn't know how to write Draw yet, but it was out. drawing and it was yes. all visualizing and, and seeing it in pictures. Well, it's much easier if, if we were communicating to each other. If you showed me a picture, I could retain that. I'd know the colors, the scene that was there, and I, it would imprint on mm -hmm. my image center. It's the yes. same with dreams. If someone speaks to us audibly and gave us a whole list of words, it's harder to retain or recall. Mm -hmm. So God speaks to us in a language that's very simple, very easy for us to remember. It's a picture, and you know the saying, a picture paints a, a thousand, thousand words, words. That's right. and so that's why he uses that so we can remember it. Well, and it's kind of how they're um, working with babies now, like the Einstein baby or whatever. It's all visual little pictures. Have you seen that? I don't know if you have or not, but it is. It's all pictures so that they can grasp what that is, and then they put a name to it, and so that's how we learn best is through those pictures. Um, 
you know, 74% or more of people have sleep issues. I mean, they're having a hard time sleeping maybe three and four times a night a week. And, and so how is someone even going to be able to retain what, what they dreamt if they're not even really getting good quality sleep? That's a good question, Wendy. I think that, you know, a sleep apnea and the snoring, any of those type of things that can happen in the stress that we live in our mm -hmm. society, I've made it a habit to um, type, have a time of meditation, have a time of prayer. And if I've had a real busy day, and it says that the busyness of the day can even cause us to dream, I'll take and relax in a shower or in a bath, put on some candles, put on some worship music, and I'll begin to focus on the Holy Spirit. And I'll ask him, I said, you know, these are the things that I'm facing. These are the decisions that I'm making. Would you give me a dream tonight? Mm. And the Bible says that he promises his beloved sleep. And yes. so I said, this is a promise, and I claim that promise tonight. And then I just let the this, this stress and the anxiety, worry or fear, any of those things that are not of God, right. and, but we try to own them. And so I said, I'm just going to roll this all over on you, Holy release Spirit. It. I release it, and I let a peace come, because peace is the potting soil of revelation. So if we can rest in his loving arms and his embrace, and I have a, a dream journal by my bed with a pen, and I said, now speak to me through my dreams, and I'm going to be faithful to write it down and steward the treasures that you're giving me. I'm going to value yes. the wisdom, the knowledge, the revelation that comes to me in the night season. And so he knows that I'm going to be a good steward with what he gives me. Yes. And then I see that I'm more fruitful in my dreaming life because I'm going to capture it. And he knows I'm going to, he's going to do his part, I'm going to do my part. Mm -hmm. And that means I can wake up refreshed. Well, you know, with, with what I teach um, as far as the, the physical body and the training, I have people journal, and it's about being accountable. And it's the mm -hmm. same thing. It's really being accountable and having that relationship in a, def in a different fashion with God, saying, okay, I'm going to be accountable to write this down. And, and with what I hear, through my dreams from you, I will go out and share that and plant that seed somewhere else. And, and that's what it's about, you know? And so I think the, the journaling is key. It and really it's is. safe because you can journal and say anything to the Holy Spirit. Right. Sometimes we might have shared something with a friend and they might have betrayed us. Yeah. But, and it is important to bring things out into the light. And yes. so when the God comes in dreams and He can show us weak areas of our life, by bringing it out and writing the vision down. And Daniel it says, write the vision down and make it clear, or Haggai, so that, the, that they can run with it. So I receive the dream, I receive the vision, I write it down, it becomes clear, it becomes step by step. Now I can walk that vision out. And a big dream can become a reality rather than just some ethereal picture that was out there in the realm of the spirit now it this, becomes it's functional. about receiving the dream too yes. though don't you think i mean so many Absolutely. people get the dream and they go oh i had this crazy dream crazy the other night dream. well it's not yes. a crazy dream you know That's i mean right. th th it may have some crazy interesting parts that you don't understand Symbolism. at the at the moment but it can be fleshed out and that's what you you assist us with that's so, it well, that's one of the things we put together here in these these are different volumes we've done one on dream sexology because yeah. dreams are love letters and mm -hmm. god's going to speak to us in a love language so he's going to use symbols of a kiss of a, an, a loving embrace of right. the different things that take place in a sexual encounter because God does love us that way and then these are ones on colors numbers symbols animals people so a symbol is going to represent something and so you have to don't think literally but you think symbolically or left, right brain, creative realm, and that way God can begin to tell you this symbol means that. Right. And it's just like in the book of Acts, this is that when the day of Pentecost came. There was symbology that was used, and, and when Jesus was here, he talked uh, with parables. That's right, that's right. And so dreams are the parabolic language of God, and he just uses them in the night season. Well, you know, Barbie, I'm just, I'm excited about what you're sharing with us, and we want to hear so much more, but we have to take this quick break. And so when we come back, Barbie's going to talk with us about practical ways to understanding your dreams. So stay tuned. fitness and wellness expert and creator of the Visibly Fit exercise program. Are you ready to be in the best shape of your life? Tired of fad diets, gym memberships you never use? Now you can transform your body without the need for any equipment. Through my program, you will quickly replace fat with lean muscle using just your body as your gym. Are you ready? 
Pam was. I've lost over 100 pounds with the help of Wendy's Visibly Fit Technique. I travel all the time, and I never thought staying in shape could be this easy. Wendy's Visible Fit program has allowed me to stay in great shape in minimum time. Receive Wendy's new firm and fabulous DVD series to sculpt your body, your booty, and your abs all by using your own body as your gym. And receive the Visibly Fit 7x11 DVD as a bonus. Order now and you will also get Wendy's detailed nutritional guide and 44-minute MP3 download absolutely free. A $125 value, but order right now and you'll get the entire package for two payments of just $24.99. So call now. We're back now with Barbie Breathitt of Breath of Spirit Ministries. And uh, during the break, Barbie and I were talking a bit about a dream that I had not too long ago. It was actually several months ago. And I wanted to share it with you guys so you can understand more about what Barbie actually teaches and trains. Um, the, the dream itself seemed weird at the time, but let, let's start at the beginning. Um, I, had, I had a lump under my arm and in and, and my breast area, and the doctor was very concerned, wanted me to go and get a mammogram, and, and I was supposed to go out of town the next day, and the doctor said, no way, you're not going out of town. I mean, this is serious stuff, mm -hmm. I'm concerned. And that night before the trip, as I was stressed out and just praying and meditating, and, and God, you know, what do I do and right. please p yeah. please heal my body um, he came to me in a dream and it's so powerful um, but I didn't understand it at that time but <laughs> I was in this huge room to make it try, try to make it uh, so you can visualize it in a huge room there was a swimming pool in the middle and there was a white shark just one white shark circling the pool okay now they had little rooms around the pool and it was kind of dark there was partitioned off and there was an angel in each room and there was a bench and they had me come into that room and sit down and light a candle so I did that you know they didn't talk to me I just mm -hmm. knew to do it and so I don't know if you've ever been to SeaWorld and you see uh, Shamu come yes. up over the the edge well that's what the shark did and at first I was frightened and then I just sat there and watched going what, what's gonna happen next well this shark came up over the edge of the water and then turned into a, a dog with four a white dog with four legs came over and and took a s sniffed around my body and sniffed the area like took a big inhale a big breath where I had the lump wow. okay and then as the dog was doing that I felt very weird but yet safe mm -hmm. and then the dog turned around walked that way and then turned into a, a, a shape of, of God in a flowing robe wow. kind of a thing the angel looked at me and said now you may blow out your candle so I did yeah. that was the end of the dream I woke up, the lump was gone. Praise God. That, that is God. a powerful dream. It is a very Wendy. powerful. So God does speak to you through dreams yes, and he does. heals you through dreams. And yes, I mean, I get chills. It gives me tears in my eyes yeah, because absolutely. it's that powerful. Very powerful. And so I wanted to know about the, the, the symbolism of, of those particular items, just to kind of give you an idea, people an idea. Well, you were in a large you, place. You were in a room, and which means your life is very large. It's going to impact a lot of different people. And swimming pools, a lot of times, can represent things of water. Our body's seventy percent of water, and within your body, that percentage of water, there was a white shark. And a shark is a devourer, something that is very it's stealth and, and very fearful, and mm -hmm. it's under the surface a lot of times. So that could represent of the lump. Now that white shark, it came at you as a devourer and it came up, tried to come up out of the pool towards you. Mm -hmm. But God, you had prayed mm -hmm. and you had lit a candle and the angel, you had followed with the angels. Angels are messengers. Yes. So God, you had called out to God. God heard your prayer. He sent the messenger who gave you the directions. You light the candle. You come into a place of rest. And now you've done your part. You've mm -hmm. called to God. Now mm -hmm. he's going to do his part. So he brings and puts the dream together to show you there's a devourer that's after you. Cancer or this lumpy tumor thing that's trying to invade your body. Right. When we take authority over that, that shark then transforms into another creature a dog but it's a white dog mm -hmm. white's the color of god it's holiness it's purity mm -hmm. and we know about dogs usually they represent to people a loyal friend yeah. a companion right. someone who's you know it's god spelled backwards a protector <laughs> and it's god spelled backwards i love that yeah. part and so he comes and god is uh, like the holy spirit is spoken of as a breath and he sniffs out the problem. Mm. He breathes it in. He takes the breath of the spirit and breath, breathes it out, removing the cancer, removing the lump, whatever that infirmity was. 
and then you're healed. So yes. that's a, I love that dream, the symbolism that's and in And don't that. think I didn't journal that one down. Oh <laughs> my, and I bet I you're still. I wrote as fast as I could. Yeah. And the light, the, our soul is a candle, like yes. a candle, mm. you know, and so so much beautiful symbolism in that dream. Yes. And to have a dream and then to have it, God heal you. We've had many people that we've interpreted their dreams, man with bladder cancer, was healed by me interpreting the dreams that God had given him, laying my hands on him, praying for him, mm -hmm. and cancer left his body. So dreams are a spiritual language and God is a spirit. And so he operates to a spirit to spirit and that brings forth eternal change. Absolutely. So you had a visitation that night, not only by an angel, Powerful. but by the God himself Praise who God. came and said, no problem. I'm going to take care of this for you, Wendy. Yes. It, oh. It's just so powerful. So, um, people that say to me, you know, how do, dreams? Come on, you know, it was probably just because I ate something spicy the mm -hmm. night before. Mm -hmm. How do I know it's God coming to me in a dream? Can you answer that question? A lot of times, the different colors will appear: red, greens, and blues. There's the seven colors of the rainbow. One of the most frequent cards that we sell are our color cards. This this volume is volume one has 18, 23 cards in it, and so. The different colors are going to indicate whether it's coming from our soul, mm -hmm. whether it's coming from the enemy, whether it's a nightmare, whether it's God speaking to us, because God is all full of the rainbow colors. If He's a white light, God is light. Right, because that's he, all light that makes it white. It refracts into the seven color. colors right. of the rainbow, and it speaks about the different aspects of that in Isaiah 11 too, and then again in Revelation, it speaks mm -hmm. of the seven spirits of God. And so He took of Himself to say, I'm never going to harm the world again, so we can look at His colors that He refracts flex through life and understand what our dreams are meaning by those colors and the different symbols that come. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, what about, um, can you give us some practical steps and, and tips on how to dream? Uh, the impossible. Dream. The impossible. No, how to dream actually in a, in a way that we can um, Make it functional. Uh, make it ourselves. functional and actually yeah. program our minds to remember that dream. What are the steps that we can take besides prayer and meditation? Oh, are there that's other wonderful. This book deals with the whole chapters on this called Dream Recall. And if you will begin to, be, as you're waking up in the morning, that's usually your most important dream. That's the dream that God has taken bits and pieces out of all the other dreams of the night. And he's put it together in the final clip. Mm. So it's going to be the most important try to get rid of your alarm clocks because dreams are like vapors. If you're startled out of your sleep, they'll be shattered and they'll mm. disappear forever. So waking up out of sleep is the best time to ask the Holy Spirit, what did you speak to me last night? What did my dreams tell me? A lot of times angels will be present in the dream and they'll begin to communicate to you. Daniel was sent angels to give him yes. skill and understanding. And so angels are very useful in our dreams and even the times that we wake up are important. So I write down the date that I had the dream, the time that I had the dream, and that's going to enable me then to go to the scriptures because a lot of times that's chapter right. and verses that's are included right. in the waking time or the date that you had the dream. And God will use scriptures because it's His Word that God watches over to perform. And so he plants his word within us. He shows it to us in a dream. Then he wakes us up so that we can write it down. And then his Holy Spirit, Joseph said, the man in the Bible, he said, do not interpretations belong to God. So Holy Spirit's going to interpret those dreams for you. You know what? This is just... I want to just dig deeper and deeper, and I wish this show was like five hours long, but we have to take a break. So thank you so much for, for sharing that insight so far. But, you, you know, now that you you have some insight on understanding a dream, how do we get a good night's sleep? I'll have some exercises to prepare your body for rest right away, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Wendy Pett, founder of Grace in Action. Did you know that the government calculated that the cost of raising your children is over $160,000 per child? That equates to $8,896 per year, $741 a month, even further down to $171 a week, and that becomes $24.24 each day. That's a little over a dollar an hour per day to raise a child. This calculation doesn't even include the college tuition fees. Grace in Action is a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to assisting single moms and children in need. 
Grace in Action doesn't just provide the finances to assist single moms, but also for the tools necessary for long-term training and to reach their long-term goals. To learn more about Grace in Action, go to graceinaction.org. The need is larger than you may realize, and no gift is too small. Thank you in advance for your generous support. As you've already heard me say on this program before, a regular exercise program isn't just about staying in shape. Being visibly fit is always tied to every other area of your life. It all works together. So right now, Barbie and I want to show you some great exercises to help you get a good night's rest. But before we do, Barbie really wanted to work on the, the butt area. So <laughs> we're going to do that today. So what I want you to do, first of all, Barbie, because one of the best things that we can do for um, our glutes, butt, however, whatever you want to call them, um, is do a squat, okay? okay. And that's going to work our legs right. as well as, as our butt. Now, what I like to do when I do a squat, I put my feet a little more than shoulder width apart, okay? okay? And I put my arms in an isometric hold, which means one arm pressing against the other, okay? okay? Now, what you'll do is you'll squat back, and as you squat back, you keep your stomach in, and you make sure your knees don't go out of your toes. So, I always say it's like hovering over a public toilet. Okay, <laughs> gives you the visual. Remember. Okay, yeah. so you slowly squat down, good, and then slowly raise up, but push all the tension uh, through the heels of your feet and squeeze the legs, squeeze, 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 Ooh, and as you good. get to the top, you push your pelvis forward. Okay. Okay. So let's try that one more time. So you're going to take it down. Slow. Oh, I feel that. It's very slow and controlled, right? Yes. Good. And squeeze the legs squeeze, as you come squeeze, up. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Yeah, you don't need equipment. You don't need weight to feel and exercise. This will be wonderful because I travel a lot. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. these are great techniques, Wendy. Good. You're doing the perfect form. Oh, good. So good. <laughs> I'm watching the champion. And squeeze. <laughs> good. So you guys would do, you know, 10 to 12. 12 to 15, it kind of depends on, on where you are physically, but you know, work up to it. And you only need to do one set, but I do these, I do those squats every day. Wow. You know, and good deal. Yeah, so I those are awesome. That. I, lo I love this part. Yeah, because you're getting your whole body yeah. engaged. So that's why I, I like. could feel it here, yep. here, and where I was supposed and, to be. And your feeling. butt. And yes. Your <laughs> good. <laughs> now I'm going to show you one more before we do something uh, to kind of put ourselves. Um, at more of a resting state. Okay. But let's work on the, the back of the legs, the hamstring, oh, and good. also the butt at the same time. Okay. Now how I want you to do this is you're going to bend your supporting leg right. and you're going to lift up and flex, like bend your knee and you're going to squeeze your hamstring, the back of your leg, and then you're going to press your leg out. Ooh. Good. Yes. Oh, and yes. bring it back. Yes, yes. Good. Now, see, we're in high heels. This I is tricky. I say, that is really teasing <laughs> grace, isn't it? It is. It is. And you're also working this leg because of the balance. Yeah, I can feel it here. Yeah. Absolutely. So if you'll do, you know, 10 to 12 or 12 to 15 of those on each leg, because you don't want to be lopsided, right? That's true. So that'll really help Balancing your butt as well. So you'll get that butt you're asking for. Oh, yes. Just got to work at it, right? Again. That 24-year-old butt. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you guys will join that, uh, us in doing those and also work those into your, your busy uh, work day or just your busy day in general. But when it's time to get some, some rest, what do we do? How do we kind of wind mm -hmm. down? And, and usually I do some, some breathing, some deep breathing, so that's important to do. But also just to, um, I'll lay in bed and do a few isometrics, okay. which are basically like we did here. Mm -hmm. um, but I put one arm over the other, so if you're laying in bed, you, just, you can just put your arms up over your chest and press. So this arm's pushing up, this arm's pushing down. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay? Yes. So it's almost like you get your body really tense and you hold for, you know, 15 to 20 seconds and then you like, ah, uh, and then you relax. Shake, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, you do, you do shake because you're really yeah, pressing hard, right? Hard. So that is a great isometric. It's great for your, your biceps, your triceps, uh, your forearms, and even uh, your shoulders and a little bit of your chest as well. Awesome. So that's something you can do just quickly if you're stressed out and you're just kind of need, you, you almost want to run around the block or something. Yeah. You, you ever get that way where you can't <laughs> yeah. quite get to sleep? Yeah. Do something like that. Do a few of those isometrics and you get really tense, but then when your body relaxes after that isometric, you're ready to unwind and, My and go arms to sleep. Even feels looser. Like, like loose and kind of. Yeah. yeah. Just so from it's doing great. That. It's great. You know, sleeping is a basic necessity of life. So here are a few final tips on how to ensure that you get a good night's rest. 
keep your room noise free. I mean, Barbie, how do you That's have true. your room at night? Mine is perfectly pitch black and it's perfectly quiet because otherwise noises can enter into your dreams and cause mm. you not to really sleep soundly or enter into REM sleep. So you want a quiet, peaceful, the right atmosphere as far as temperature too, so, sure. that, you, so that you can enter into that Now, you sleep. know what, I've always heard that if you wear socks at night, I know that sounds funny, but you get a better night's sleep because your, your toes are nice and, and warm. Because I think you should add oil on them too, so that way you it's go. softening the skin as well. I so like I, that. I like that. I'll have to get <laughs> some socks. You know, sleep scientists actually recommend keeping your room cool yes. and um, having that minimal light, so that's very, very important. And don't believe the myth that adults need less sleep as they age. That's not true. I need a lot. <laughs> uh, the National Sleep Foundation actually recommends seven to nine hours, depending on, on your own personality. But, but you know, he, here's to you guys and, and your sleep, and here's to you, Barbie, because, you know what, I want to have her back. What do you guys think? I would love to come you know, back. Yes. I mean, we have so much to dive into. I'm fascinated by dreams and how God uh, comes to us in our dreams, and, and, and partly it's because of my own personal experience, but um, it, it's just fascinating, and I think it's so untapped that people need to be educated more on it. Well, it's a whole new language, and so people, I'm, I'm passionate about letting people understand this new language. Well, it's not new, it's an ancient Hebraic language that God's always spoken to His people through dreams. Right. But we haven't really understood that, especially in the American culture. Right. So I think as people begin to understand that they're not pizza dreams, they're not weird dreams, they're really <laughs> love letters that God is sending them, and they have meaning, and they have purpose, and they're pointing them to life, and destiny, and their callings, and their potentials. They'll be begin to say, pay attention to them, record them, steward those dreams, and begin to write those things down. And well, I, I would love to come back. I, well, we're going to have you back. And I love the fact that it's love letters from God in our dreams. So, you know, here's to some profitable Z's in your life. Yes. And um, thank you, Barbie. We will see you next time on Visibly Fit. wellness expert and creator of the Visibly Fit exercise program. Are you ready to be in the best shape of your life? Tired of fad diets, gym memberships you never use? Now you can transform your body without the need for any equipment. Through my program, you will quickly replace fat with lean muscle using just your body as your gym. Are you ready? Pam was. I've lost over 100 pounds with the help of Wendy's Visibly Fit technique. I travel all the time and I never thought staying in shape could be this easy. Wendy's Visibly Fit Fit program has allowed me to stay in great shape in minimum time. Receive Wendy's new firm and fabulous DVD series to sculpt your body, your booty, and your abs all by using your own body as your gym. And receive the Visibly Fit 7x11 DVD as a bonus. Order now and you will also get Wendy's detailed nutritional guide and 44-minute MP3 download absolutely free. A $125 value, but order right now and you'll get the entire package for two payments of just $24.99. So call now.